This is so cool. Look at the light. I mean, look at this. At least look behind you there, Will. Oh, that's nice. I'm a commercial photographer. Uh, basically, I do work for businesses, industry, magazines, advertising agencies, design firms. Uh, I do a lot of people. Mostly I shoot people, and I'm mostly on location. Uh, I do a lot of studio work as well. You know, I've been in this business a really long time, and I've done a little bit of everything, but I really like to work with people and try to get something about their personality. What, what we're looking for here is to really capture your personality. Uh -huh. A meter is extremely important in what I do. Okay, a 500th at F4. When you're lighting, I have balancing lights. I've got this light and that light, background lights, main lights, hair lights, slash lights. Everything has to be in relationship to the main light. And there's no way that I can guess that. I can kind of sort of get in the ballpark, but I really need to be able to measure my light accurately so that I can make it do exactly what I want it to do. That's beautiful. I always position the meter so that the light falls on the dome the same way that it falls on the subject. So, in other words, if the subject is three quarters lit, I get the dome three quarters lit. If the subject's half lit, I get the dome half lit. I don't necessarily point it right towards the camera because that, that can be misleading. I really try to be visually acute so that I am always aware exactly how the light is falling on the subject. And then I match that on the meter and that I find is gonna give me my most accurate reading. I really rely on my histograms in order to be able to give me a good overall exposure but the histogram is not going to be able to tell me what the ratio is between my main light and my accessory lights. So the meter is what I use. I totally count on that to be able to get me exactly where I want it to be. It's again, it's where I, I need to have that kind of control to get the kind of precise lighting that I want to achieve. You are just glowing. The late afternoon light with that golden warm glow that was coming through was just absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's the golden hour. Everybody knows cool. the golden hour. It's so beautiful, especially on people, because you get that beautiful skin tone, and it was dramatic against the skyline. But then we turned around, and the sun was shining down over here, but in the background, there was dark clouds. So that just adds to the drama of all this, where you've got this nice warm glow, and then you've got this deep cool in the background. So then we found the Empire State Building that was also glowing in the late afternoon sun. So this is magic. I mean, this, this is the kind of stuff that you can't possibly plan for. You just find it, and then you really have to take advantage of it when you can. This is unbelievable! The pocket wizard inside the meters is brilliant. I don't know why nobody thought of it before, because it is such a great thing. It has made my life so much easier to be able to have that and not be on a sync cord or not be on non-cord and having my assistant fire it off, I can just hit it from wherever I am and it works. Saponic meters are without a doubt the best meter that's in the market. There's nobody else that's as as efficient, has as many options, and is as well built and long lasting. There, there isn't any competition as far as I'm concerned. I gotta shoot this. This is like, it's too good. I mean, look at this, it's like fantastic. My ISO is at 200. My white balance is on sun. I am shooting raw. That is so unbelievable. The shot that I'm doing today is really tricky because I'm going to have multiple lights. I have my main light and a slash light, maybe a background light as well, and I'm balancing that to the twilight and the city lights in the background. So the first thing is using the incident meter with the strobes to be able to get them in the right relationship. Okay, that's 563. Let's try that. Take it up. Then I have to take a reflective reading off of the sky to find out what shutter speed to use in order to be able to get all the light to be balanced there. To match to 5.6, that's now giving me 8. Whenever you're photographing something that is a light source, whether it's the twilight sky or whether it's a computer screen or anything like the scene at night, then you have to use a reflective meter in order to be able to find out how much light is coming out of your subject. And turn it this way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, you're good. This is all about the edge now, Will. Awesome, it looks like there's spirits coming out of your head. That's fabulous. So as it kept going down, then we were looking for more of the city lights to come on. When you get into that place, now you're starting to get into much slower shutter speeds. I think it's time for the horse head. So 
when you handhold the camera, you're going to get camera shake. The strobe is going to freeze the subject, but the background is now going to get all blurry. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I had the tripod with me, but I actually never pulled the tripod out because I decided for the mood of what Will was doing, for the music and the kind of musician that he is, that having just a straight shot of balancing the light and having everything be sharp was not really indicative of what the picture was about. So I started playing with shaking the camera to making the background shake and also zooming the camera during the exposure, zooming the lens, and I would go both in and out, start with him small and zoom in tight and then go the other way. And that's what got all the light in the background. We still had some light in the sky, even though the city lights were on, so we have all these colors just look like they're emanating out of his head. So, so it's really a, kind of a matter of experimentation. This is where your LCD display on the back of the camera comes in very handy. Not so much to tell you your exposure, because you really need the meter to be able to tell you that you've got your lighting ratios where you need them to be in the balance, but to see the effect of, am I shaking the camera too much? Am I spinning the camera too much? Am I zooming too much? because you can overdo it and you don't really see any subject anymore because all the background is blending through. So that's why I was chimping so much, going back and looking to see so that I could make sure that I could get the effect that I wanted without, without going overboard. Well, you're looking great. You're absolutely awesome. This is just so cool. <laughs> I love photography. Okay, hold it there, Will, and sparkle it, please. It was just fantastic, with the way that the light was on him, the edge light that was on him, that slash light, and then the light in the background was just amazing. And, and Will was fantastic. I mean, he was great in the expressions, on the poses, his motion, his movement, the intensity that he was giving. It just, it was the perfect collaboration. Just like we've been completely and totally blessed by the elements right now, everything has come together. The light is fabulous. You are just amazing. The music sounds great. Everything is pulling together. I mean, this is just like awesome. Absolute best photograph sessions I've ever done.